9.06 on this Thursday. Good morning. This is John DePietro, special edition of the WPR Morning News Political Showdown. I want to welcome our guests, folks. The next hour, we'd like to make it as discussion-oriented as as possible, and I want to just commend the four of them. They've spent a lot of time together. It is unprecedented, the number of forums that the four of you have uh, been in. Hey, uh, Tyler, we have a little bit of a leak coming through on uh, that microphone. I can hear you and Tara, so... Um, just okay there we go uh let me say good morning to our four guests uh in studio starting with good morning to from the moderate party ken block good morning good morning, ken. Good morning to from the democrat party general treasurer frank caprio mr caprio good morning john independent Canada, lincoln chafee good morning mr chafee good morning and also the republican nominee he is john robitaille good morning john robitaille good morning john let's start off uh some individual questions starting with uh, Lincoln Chafee, you were in the debate on Sunday night, on uh, excuse me, on Tuesday night on Channel 12, and the discussion came to the now famous uh, shove, as I call it, the shove heard around the world. I want to play you your comment and give you a chance to uh, respond to it. I heard on my way to taking my daughter to school that Mr. Caprio had been on talk radio saying, telling the president to shove it, and I, I, I just it didn't make any sense. It was a gorgeous fall day. Uh, his campaign had said earlier that. Uh, that it was a po it was a very positive day for our state. A lot of excitement, and anticipation of a presidential visit, and uh, it just didn't make any sense. Mr. Chafee, in 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 fact, uh, weather-wise, perhaps, but this really was not a presidential visit. This was coming in to raise money uh, for David Cicilline. What about those people out of work, now approaching the holidays? How do you think they view a presidential visit where then he even left after 20 minutes, said he said he'd go home and, and uh, scoop some poop from the dog? Do, do you think those people, the average person who obviously could not afford 15000 per couple, if they viewed that as a beautiful day? John, you're distorting the visit. He also went to one socket and visited a factory, and there was a mix of events, and it was a a beautiful day in Rhode Island and there was a lot of pride to have the President of the United States here in our state going to a factory in Woonsocket and visiting with the workers and hearing exactly what you just described, the difficult economic circumstances we're in and particularly with that factory and the orders they have to fill and get, getting out their product and uh, keeping their employees employed. So it was a mix. It, in a political season, you, you do some fundraising. That, that comes with the territory. Not trying to distort it, but in reality, there were two fundraisers, Convention Center, then the East Side. There was the opportunity back in April when he was in Framingham, could have come here during the worst floods. That truly would have been a presidential visit. Don't you agree? All I can comment is it was a, 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 a lot of Rhode Islanders felt pride that the President of the United States was here in our state. John, if I could, if I could uh, add something. The president was coming to Rhode Island in early October. He planned it to do some fundraisers. And then my office contacted him by email saying, you know, this doesn't look good here in Rhode Island. The, you know, you're coming in just to, just to treat Rhode Island like an ATM machine. Why don't you do some things with some small businesses? That's what I've been running on uh, throughout the last year in my campaign. And then and we produced an email that, uh, that was sent October 7th saying, let's do some appearances with some small businesses. And then after that, there was a, a plan of this Woonsocket small business. But the reality is, you know, for the president to come up here, do you know how much it costs the taxpayers? And we pay for this. This doesn't get reimbursed. Just for the plane alone, it's about half a, a million dollars for him to come here. Now, he only raised about half a million dollars by coming up here, but that doesn't pay for the plane. So here we are, the taxpayers of Rhode Island and the taxpayers of the country paying half a million dollars for him to come up here and not even sit down and have dinner with some Rhode Islanders. Mr. Chaffee, I just want to give you a chance to respond to that, and then I'm going to move on to another question. But. Well, unfortunately, this exploded into national news, and uh, Mr. Caprio chose some ill-advised words to represent Rhode Island across I'll stand the country. By, I'll stand by my words. I'll stand by my words. And the main thing was the understanding of the difficult situation that President Obama was in, in light of that I had been a supporter. You know who's in a tough, a tough situation? All the people uh, of Rhode Island right now. Right, They're in a tough situation. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Of course they are. And we were proud to have the President of the United States come here and listen to uh, the people of Rhode Island and talk about our high unemployment and our budget deficit and yeah. the, the challenges we have in this state. We're but before before proud, I move on. Very if happy they, to if, have him here. If they had, had asked you, do you think it was a little over the top, third highest unemployment, 15,000 a couple on the east side. That's enough to feed three people for a year at Twin Oaks. 
I'm not in charge of his campaign okay. and the, and but the if fundraising. You had been asked, These campaigns are expensive. If you had been asked. I'm a sure bit that the top. Uh, no. President Clinton has raised money here. Other okay. presidents have come here and raised money. That's I, just part of this political system. I want to ask Republican John Robitaille. In your ads, you uh, give your describe yourself as a tough negotiator. Can you give us an example? In the last 12 months, you were part of a negotiation that you deemed to be successful. In the past 12 months, I was not in labor relations. Um, that experience I gained over 10 years some time ago, and, and that's the position that I'm taking. I haven't been, I've been campaigning for the last uh, nine, 10 months. Uh, I can't tell you of a negotiation um, episode or instance that I have sat down across the table and negotiated something in the last 10 months. No, I've been campaigning. But but just w what is an example of a tough negotiation where you came out either on top or you were viewed as that tough negotiator? Oh gosh, when when you go back and look at all of my experience, I mean, I negotiated dozens of contracts across the country with the Teamsters, the paper workers, the bakers, confectionery, tobacco workers. Some were multiple plan agreements but in tough with economic the, times. Nothing with the Kachiri administration. No, I was not in that position. I was okay. the com communications director, John. I wasn't the policy director. Or, or but there was no. Re was there a reason? If that's a skill, mm -hmm. why didn't the governor tap into that when you worked for him? It wasn't the role he hired me to do. I had my hands full with handling media relations and communications, internal and external communications. I was not a part of the policy team, nor did I have face-to-face -face contact in those kinds of uh, situations. Uh, General Treasurer Caprio, Mr. Block, I'm going to come to you in just a moment. New poll is out this morning. Shows the race now, according to Channel 10, Victor Profuki. Link Chafee, 35. John Robitaille, you find yourself third. Is it possible that your message is not connecting? And maybe people are saying, based on that poll, we don't mind paying the, the, that extra tax, as small as it is, that that Mr. Chafee proposes. John, all I can go by is the reception that I'm getting. You know, this morning I'm out 6 o'clock at the uh, commuter train station in Providence shaking hands, and I think we're going to have a big groundswell on Tuesday. There's a lot of people that have come out to vote that want to see big changes in this state, and they want to see somebody up there that's going to fight every day but to try and bring some jobs is back. Is it possible that his message on the tax is resonating? and yours on the small business and jobs is not. John, all these numbers are within, when you start looking at margins of error and what the turnout's going to be. You know, I haven't spoken directly about polls from the first uh, poll that came out over 10 months ago, and I'm gonna stay focused on what's important, and that's the people who are listening this morning and the people that are at their small businesses this morning battling to get by. Ken Block, very successful business person. You'd like to be the governor. How can you convince people that you'd be an effective leader if by all accounts, the moderate party, you have been unsuccessful in bringing more people under the umbrella of the moderate party. Well, we just started. Uh, given that we the party was uh, only declared a party last August, in just a little bit more than a year, we're running a uh, hard governor gubernatorial campaign, True. running an outstanding general uh, attorney general campaign, and uh, we have a, a handful of candidates in the other races. So you have to build it. You're building your donor base. You're building your infrastructure. You're building your volunteer network. And anybody who would think that the day you declare a party that you uh, run a full slate of candidates is kind of crazy. I mean, even the Republicans still don't run a full slate of candidates. The Tea Party has been very successful, essentially based on ideas, whether you agree with them or not. But the moderate party, seemingly, if it weren't for your personal wealth, would not even be on the radar screen. No, that's just not true. The, what, what we've seen, you were talking about it just before uh, the top of the hour, uh, in this race, the vast majority of the people are not drawn to the candidates. And as I, as in sitting at this table, uh, to a large extent, there's dislike for the candidates. People don't know who to vote for. There's a large number of people who are undecided. And a lot of it is because most of the time and energy has been spend, spent by these candidates telling everybody why the other candidates aren't good choices, as opposed to indicating what the, why they're better choices. That is a good lead-in for our uh, next segment I want to play. I mean, uh, all of you have had commercials. We're going to ear some of them, and I just want to give uh, the person it's aimed at a chance to respond, and you a chance to defend it. But there is something I do want to nail down down and it's education. I want to start with John Robitaille. Yes or no, this is the only segment really of yes or no I'm going to do. Do you support Race to the Top? Yes, I do. You do, across the board. And what type of people your governor should make up the Board of Regents? I, I think we have a good um, uh, diverse Board of Regents right now and uh, it, like with any other board or commission or even uh, department directors, once I get into office, there'll be a review process. Mr. Chafee, uh, do you support Race to the Top? Yes, I wrote a letter in support of it. Across the board in the state, you support Race to the Top, yes. I want to be on the cutting edge of education in across the country. 
And there's a lively and healthy debate on the direction of education and charter schools, testing, and I'm very tuned in to this debate. Who is that? Because I want the best for Rhode Island in our school system. Who was the letter sent to? It was part of the package that was sent to the Department of Education. That you support race those yes. And what about the Board of Back Regents? in March, I believe. What type? Well, the, the, there was, uh, you drew some headlines when uh, you said you weren't necessarily on board with it, where the money was going to continue. Uh, there was then talk of whether or not you would keep uh, Education Commissioner Deborah Gist. I said to the reporter who reported that, uh, Jennifer Jordan from the Providence Journal, exactly what I said here. There's a lively and healthy debate going on on education, particularly on choice, which is charter schools, and testing. And the, the uh, success of those two issues in our public school system. And what about the Board of Regents? Who There's a lot of debate on this, on uh, charter schools and on testing. But what about the Board of Regents? Who should I want make the that best. Up? I want the best that are tuned into this debate and making sure Rhode Island's going in the right direction, not the wrong direction. Under Governor Chafee, is there room for former union members or current on that Board of Regents? Of course. Of course. That's what you want at the table. Everybody at the table talking about going in the right direction. Are union leaders really that knowledgeable about education? <laughs> John, they're in the classroom. Uh, General Treasurer Frank Caprio, do you support Race to the Top? Yeah, very supportive, and I was, uh, with the first application, gave a, uh, a written support that went along with the application. And what about the Board of Regents? Yeah, we want the most qualified people. You want people that understand education, that have an open mind, that don't necessarily agree that the status quo is the best way, that the old way of doing business is the best way. You want people that are going to always be looking to, to do what's best for the kids in the classroom. And Mr. Block? Absolutely support Race to the Top. I've, already, I've been a loud proponent of substantial changes to the way that we run our educational system. I've been a proponent of two big things we need to change in terms of white-collar contracts and uh, teacher assessments. And we need reform on the Board of Regents, and we need to change the way we do things because we're failing our kids. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. Chafee, Caprio, Robitaille, Block, in studio, a lot more. It's Sean DePietro, a lot more with our final four, as we're calling it, Political Showdown, when we continue.